हेलो फ्रेंड्स माय नेम इज विकास सो फ्रेंड्स वी हैव एन ऐप बाय द नेम कैरियर्स क्लाउड व्हिच यू कैन गो एंड डाउनलोड थ्रू द प्ले स्टोर इन योर एंड्रॉइड फोन्स दिस ऐप विल हेल्प यू इन बूस्टिंग योर प्रिपरेशन वंस यू हैव डाउनलोडेड दिस ऐप यू कैन गो एंड लॉग इन विद योर जीमेल और गूगल आईडी इन दिस एप्लीकेशन एंड वंस यू हैव लॉग्ड इन देन यू विल बी ट्रांसफर्ड टू दिस पेज हियर ऑन दिस पेज यू विल बी एबल टू सी होम ऑल कोर्सेज माई कोर्सेज एंड डाउट सेशंस ऑल्सो सो इन द कोर्सेज इफ वी टॉक टू यू इन द कोर्सेज इन आर इफ यू परचेज कोर्स फ्रॉम अस वी विल बी प्रोवाइडिंग यू विद मल्टीपल मटीरियल फॉर योर प्रिपरेशन मटीरियल सच एज your daily current affairs your weekly current affairs your monthly current affairs in daily we will be providing you with 20 questions quiz in ebook that is in your pdf formats of the questions of that particular day then we'll be providing you in weekly with the same 50 question quiz that will be a compiled and important 50 questions and also we'll be providing you a compiled pdf of the weekly current affairs then in the question answer format also it will be a very helpful pdf and similarly for monthly also will be providing you important monthly current affairs on a monthly basis so the same content you will be revising maximum number of times and it will help you in your preparation we'll also provide material related to your banking and awareness also and apart from that we'll be covering all important topics such as your apps and web portal important days books and authors national affairs international affairs sports defense awards obituary important days and what not everything will be covered in this topic wise by me only so apart from that we also provide state wise current affairs that will also help you to prepare for the regional exams hello friends how are you all i hope you are all good so friends in today's video we will be discussing important current affairs of 5th may the session will be very helpful and important to you all so do pay attention till the end first first we are talking about operation satark recently rpf that is your railway protection force has launched a focus effort under operation satark but what is this operation satark first of all the first question that you need to remember is will be direct that operation satark was re released or was launched by whom it was launched by railway protection force all right and this operation satark was from 5th of april to 30th of april this was the date or the duration for which this operation satark was the main aim or the objective of starting this operation satark was to take against any of the illegal crimes such as illegal liquor fake currency circulation illegal tobacco products unaccounted gold or cash or precious items any items that is being transported through railway network for purpose of tax evasion or smuggling or of any such crime all right to take against to take actions against such actions this operation operation satark was launched by railway protection force all right and that to these all crimes that are being taking place in the railway network to avoid them to reduce them and in order to stop those particular crimes this operation satark was launched now the indian railways being the primary transporter of the nation is likely to be used by tax invaders smugglers gun runners and forces in mission to the nation to transport the illegal items to different parts of the country and in order to make that in a proper flow in order to arrest all those criminals who are related to such smugglings or tax invasions this was launched all right that is your operation satark question can be asked that it was launched by which organization it was launched by which force then it is your railway protection force and it is associated with which department that remember it is also associated with it is associated with railway department operation satark next next we are talking about a mobile container hospital as you can see here these are the quickly made mobile containers that can be made at any location without any hustle if you remember do we during the covid 19s we saw the number of cases increase and the number of patients that were being admitted to the hospital were also increasing and more and more patients were requiring hospital beds but we did not have that proper amount of hospital beds earlier so what we did was even china and many other countries what they did was they built the portable hospitals all right portable hospitals that means in a large stadium or say for example india also started opting the railway 
coaches that were conduct, uh, converted into the hospital beds to the patient those were in requirement of it so these are similar kind of mobile container hospitals that has been recently inaugurated by realtel who all right and the location where these mobile container hospitals are set up is at vishakhapatnam amts what is amts first of all you should remember amts is it stands for andhra pradesh medical tech zone all right andhra pradesh medical tech zone it is the world's first integrated medical device manufacturing hub that is situated in vishakhapatnam andhra pradesh so this full form you should know that is andhra pradesh medic tech zone all right i repeat andhra pradesh med tech zone or you can say medical tech zone moving on prime minister narendra modi inaugurated the global patidar business summit 2022 in surat gujarat global patidar business summit what is this gpbs all right gpbs 2022 was conducted or inaugurated where in gujarat and gujarat it was in surat this was a 3 day summit it was organized by sardardham under the mission 2026 to provide an impetus to the social economic development of patidar community gpbs 2022 was held at sarsasana convention center at surat from 29th of april to 1st of may but what was this global patidar business summit this global patidar business summit it aims at bringing together small medium and large enterprises within the community to support them to help them to nurture them to provide them training and also provide them employment assistance to the educated youth the theme on which this gpbs that is your global patidar business summit was held in gujarat is atam nirbhar community to atam nirbhar gujarat and india i repeat the main theme you have to remember this their question can be asked that gpbs 2022 was based on what theme it was based on atam nirbhar community to atam nirbhar gujarat and india coming back let's revise this global patidar business summit or gpbs was inaugurated by whom prime minister narendra modi where was it held location it is surat gujarat this is a biennial event all right this was conducted or you can say this was a 3 day long summit it was organized by whom sardardham under the mission 2026 to provide impetus to the social economic development of the patidar community when was it conducted it was a 3 day long summit that means from 29th of april to 1st of may this was conducted and at sarsasana convention center that is in gujarat and what was the theme atam nirbhar community to atam nirbhar gujarat and india this was the main theme and why or if objective is asked and you should know what it was based on it is to provide to nurture support to help the new entrepreneurs provide them training guiding them providing assistance or also helping the educated youth to get a employment or job opportunities so this was your gpbs summit held in gujarat next india sinks to 150th rank in the rsf world press freedom index 2022 remember if we are talking about rsf world press freedom index what is the rank of india now it is 150th on the occasion of world press freedom day that is observed on 3rd of may the reporters without borders this is your rsf reporters without borders this is your rsf all right remember this release the 20th edition of the world press freedom index 2022 stating a fall in the india's press freedom ranking from 150th with a score of 41 in 2022 from 142nd in 2021 that means in 2021 the rank of india in this particular world press freedom index was 142 but now the latest report of 2022 suggests that the rank of india is 150 and the organization that released this data is your reporters without borders that is your rsf and this was released on world press freedom day that is observed on 3rd of may all right coming back what is the rank of india in the world press freedom index for 2022 that was released by reporters without freedom or uh, without borders it is 150 in 2021 it was 142 and it is out of 180 countries all right these are all the things you need to pay attention and remember then this list has been topped by whom we know the rank of india in 2022 is 150 but if we are talking about rank 1 which is the country it is norway all right second 
Denmark. Second is your Denmark. Third, Estonia. Fourth, uh, third, Sweden. Fourth, Estonia. And fifth, Finland. And which is the rank 180th? Remember, North Korea remained at the bottom of the list with 180th rank. All right. Next. Next, we are talking about India stays out of global declaration on future on internet. India is not one of the 61 countries that have signed a worldwide declaration calling for the internet to remain open, free and neutral. The United States, the European Union, the UK, Canada, France are among all the countries that have signed the declaration stating the declaration is for the future of the internet. As it is known, it is a manifesto that aims to prevent digital prevent digital totalitarianism then if we look at some of the key commitments of the declaration that was signed by 61 countries and the declaration is for the future of the internet here some key points you need to remember it will protect human rights and fundamental freedoms of all people promote a global internet that advances free flow of information advance inclusive and affordable connectivity so that all the people can benefit from the digital economy Promote trust in the global digital ecosystem, including through the protection of privacy. All right. These are some of the key commitments in this declaration. That means it will be a free Internet for all. And if all the country, all the members are using a free Internet, that means the flow of information between the people will also be in a better way and it will be more secured and in next. Next, we are talking about IIFL and open financial technologies. What are they? Listen, two organizations you have to remember here. IIFL Finance Limited, that is a non-banking finance company. And second, you need to remember Open Finance Technologies Private Limited. That is the Asia's largest small and medium enterprise that are focused on neo-banking platform. First of all, what are these new banking platform? A new bank is a type of digital bank that does not have any physical location. That means these new banks, they have no physical location. First thing you need to remember. All right. They use artificial intelligence, machine learning and technology to provide personalized service to clients while lowering operating expenses. All right. They have no physical location, no physical banks. They will be providing all the services and the personalized services to the clients while lowering their operating expense as they won't have any physical office. Then the clients can or the people can provide the service from their home itself or any other way. But there is no physical bank as the traditional banks have. These are your new banks. So if we look at the data, IIFL Finance Limited, that is a NBFC and Open Financial Technologies Private Limited, that is the Asia's largest small and medium enterprises, has focused new banking platform have entered into a joint venture to launch India's first new bank to serve the banking and credit requirements of MSME sector. All right. So IIFL have been into a joint venture of a joint venture with Open Financial Technologies Private Limited. They both have entered into a joint venture to launch India's first neo bank. All right. India's first neo bank, and that is to serve banking and credit requirements of which sector of MSME sector. In India, there are around 63.3 million MSMEs with 99% of them being micro enterprises. One of the reasons for this sector's underserved status is the lack of data for credit assessment. To satisfy the requirement, IIFL Finance will utilize Open Financial Technologies Private Limited consumer neo banking platform to provide more services to its clients. So there is the, that is the joint venture that have been signed between IIFL Finance Limited and Open Financial Technologies Private Limited. All right. Then some of the features of this neo bank you should remember. This neo bank offers one of its kind user interface system designed specifically for small merchants. As we know, in this 99% of them are the small industry person. It will provide an alternative to traditional banking by providing a simple banking interface and seamless interaction with accounting, finance and payroll among many other facilities that will be provided by this new bank that is in being launched by a joint venture of IIFL and Open Financial Technologies Private Limited. Next, 
नेक्स्ट वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट कैनरा बैंक हैज लॉन्च अ स्किल लोन्स इन एसोसिएशन विद ए एस ए पी वॉट इज ए एस ए पी एडिशनल स्किल एक्विजिशन प्रोग्राम ऑल राइट इन ऑर्डर टू गेट स्किल्स बिकॉज वी नो इफ यू वॉन्ट टू एक्वायर एनी स्किल यू नीड टू गेट इट्स अ सर्टिफिकेट और एनी डिग्री फॉर इट सो समाइम्स सम इंस्टीट्यूशन विच आर अ रेप्यूटेड इंस्टीट्यूशन चार्ज वेरी हाई फॉर दोज पर्टिकुलर स्किल्स ऑल राइट इन ऑर्डर टू गेट दो स्किल्स विद एंड टू गेट लोन्स फॉर दोज स्किल्स Canara Bank has recently launched a skill loans in association with ASAP. All right, ASAP is your additional skill acquisition program. Kerala, the go in this in ASAP is in Kerala, the government company under the higher education department. Then, if is asked where is this ASAP additional skill acquisition program, it is of Kerala. So, Canara Bank has recently launched skill loans in association with ASAP of Kerala. next under this could any student as i told you if you want to pursue any skill you will be provided a loan that will be ranging from 5000 to 1.5 lakh rupees students pursuing skill training programs are offered by asap kerala or other central or state government recognized agencies under this national skill qualification framework or national skill development corporation they can avail 5000 to 1.5 lakh rupees of loan the loans will be provided to students interested in pursuing skill training any program this loan will be provided without any collateral and has a repayment period of 3 to 7 years what does it mean by does not have any collateral if you want to purchase if you want to have any kind of a loan then you have to give them a collateral or you can say you have to provide them with a proof or any property or any kind of a product that states that in a, if in any case you are not able to pay back the loan then the role uh, this uh, loan will be adjusted from that property from that collateral all right so this loan this skill development loan loan for the skill development will be provided without any collateral this can be provided up to 5000 rupees to 1.5 lakh rupees all right so these are the thing you should know coming back which bank signed this or which bank is launching this it was your canara bank that have signed with asap of kerala to provide skill loans of up to 5000 to 1.5 lakh rupees this loan will be provided without any collateral and this loan will be provided up to or this will provide a repayment period of up to 3 to 7 years of age next next we are talking about ayana renewable power has partnered with green state hydrogen india to develop green hydrogen projects i repeat ayana renewable power has partnered with green state hydrogen india to develop green hydrogen projects in india before this if you remember first pure green hydrogen plant first pure green hydrogen plant where is being this built this is in zorhat and where is zorhat zorhat is in assam all right and this first pure green hydrogen plant being built in zorhat in assam by whom by oil that is your oil india limited coming back niif that is your national investment and infrastructure fund backed by ayana renewable power private limited and norway based green set asa subsidiary green state these two companies have been together tied up as it said they have been partnered to develop green hydrogen projects in india what is a green hydrogen green hydrogen is basically that releases zero carbon into the atmosphere zero carbon into the atmosphere that is your green hydrogen also remember by 2050 india aims to produce 3/4 of its hydrogen from renewable energy sources also there was a target of government of india to provide or to make india carbon neutral to make india carbon neutral by what year by 2070 this was the target year that has been set by india recently to make india carbon neutral by 2070 and which are the two organization they are ayana renewable power has partnered with green state hydrogen india to develop or to work on green hydrogen project also by 2050 india is aiming to produce 3/4 of its hydrogen from renewable energy sources coming back what are the key points of this the companies under the collaboration will develop large scale green hydrogen solutions to provide the long term supply of green hydrogen to industrial and commercial customers in india as we know india is a growing 
or you can say india is a developing country we are seeing various projects coming up in india we are seeing a large number of unicorns in india we also see there is a high rise in the startup culture all right new industries are coming there is a boom in the industry so all these required power either we can generate power from the non -resour renewable resources of energy or either we can uh, have uh, have those power with the help of renewable sources of energy so which is better non renewable or renewable definitely renewable sources is better and in that too now hydrogen fuel is coming up and it is considered as the fuel of the century because pure hydrogen pure green hydrogen when it is burned it does not release any amount of carbon into the atmosphere that will pollute the environment all right this initial pilot project will be launched in karnataka pilot project that means it is on trial basis the partnership is in line with the national hydrogen mission with an aim to make india a global global hub for production and export of green hydrogen similarly if you remember there is a shortage of semiconductor all over the world so in order to make india hub for manufacturing of semiconductors semicon India 2022 was recently conducted and it was inaugurated by Prime Minister Narendra Modi. Can you tell me where was this conducted? This was conducted at Bangalore. This was the location. Next, as we were talking about a unicorn, what is a unicorn? Unicorn is any any startup that has crossed a market cap that is your M cap of more than one billion dollar. All right, that is roughly around seventy seven thousand seventy seven hundred to seventy eight hundred crore rupees all right market cap is the overall valuation of that company so any company or any startup that has crossed a market cap of 1 billion dollar or say 7700 to 7800 crore rupees that company or that startup is considered as unicorn so recently which uh, which startup became the 100th unicorn startup of india it is your dash which is the 100th unicorn startup of india tell me what does it what is the name of it the name of it is what is the name of the portal open all right this is the name of the portal recently a privately held startup company with a valuation of 1 billion dollar is referred to as unicorn and it is a type of a digital bank remember neo bank is a type of a digital bank that does not have any physical locations we saw and it will provide the customers with the various services at an affordable and alternative to the traditional banks all right we know there is a bank there is a proper physical building of the traditional banks but these new banks are a new age digital bank they won't have any physical location and they will provide all the services to their customers online itself if we are talking which was the first unicorn of india it was your inmobi inmobi was the first unicorn of india that was declared in in the year 2011 it was a mobile ad platform in mobi all right so which is the 100th unicorn of india it is your by the name open all right and it is the world's largest sme neo banking platform that became the 100th unicorn of india next ibm chairman arvind krishna has been elected to the board of federal reserve bank of new york i repeat who has been appointed as the new person to the board of Federal Reserve Bank of New York. He is IBM Chairman Arvind Krishna. As you can see him in the picture, Arvind Krishna, he is the current Chairman and Chief Executive Officer of IBM, that is International Business Machines Corporation. He was elected to the board of directors of Federal Reserve of Bank of New York, United States of America. To fill the vacancy in the office for the remaining period of three-year term, which ends in December, 31st of December 2023. So, if question asked who has been elected to the board of directors of the Federal Reserve Bank of New York, he is Arvind Krishna. If we talk about Arvind Krishna, he has been serving as the chairman and CEO of IBM since January 2021, succeeding IBM executive chairman Virginia M. Romtiji. Previously, he also served as the CEO and a member of the board of IBM. He also holds 15 patents and founded the security software business of IBM. This is everything you need to know about Arvind Krishna and currently he is the chairman of IBM and he has been elected to the board of Federal Reserve Bank of New York. If we talk about this Federal Reserve Bank of New York, remember 
this the president and ceo of this is john c williams and where is the headquarter it is in new york it is one of the 12 regional reserve banks the federal system is an independent governmental entity that was created in the year 1913 to serve the central banks of united states it is similar to your rbi of india all right next next we are talking about nand mulchandani he became the first Indian origin person who has been appointed as the first ever CTO that is your chief technical officer of CIA that is your central intelligence agency. I repeat, Nand Mulchandani, he has been appointed as the first Indian origin person who has been appointed to the post of CTO, first ever CTO of CIA central intelligence agency highly important question will be asked who has been who has became the first ever cto of cia he is nand mulchandani and he is from where question can also be asked that who became the first ever cto and the first indian origin person to be appointed as the first ever cto of cia central intelligence agency he is nand mulchandani you have to remember this highly important Next, we are talking about Prime Minister's Advisor. Who has been appointed as the new Prime Minister's Advisor? He is former Petroleum Secretary Tarun Kapoor. Important. Remember the name Tarun Kapoor. He is the former Petroleum Secretary and he has been appointed as the Advisor to Prime Minister. He is an IAS of officer, IAS officer of 1987 batch of Himachal Pradesh cadre who was retired as the secretary to the Ministry of Petroleum and Natural Gas. He has been appointed as an advisor to the Prime Minister of Narendra Modi and he was appointed to the post initially for a period of two years from the date of joining or until further orders, whichever is earlier. So he has been appointed to the period of two years. He is former Petroleum Secretary Tarun Kapoor. He has been appointed to the post of advisor of Prime Minister. Next. Recently, a mystery missile has been launched by Chinese warship recently. So it has become a news. You should remember a mystery missile that was launched by Chinese warship recently. The People Liberation Army Navy that is plan of China has launched an unidentified and mysterious missile from its type 055 that is your Renhai class guided missile cruiser on 19th of April 2022. According to the experts, the new missile is expected to be an anti-ship blasting missile known as YJ-21. So how this question can be asked that recently plan that is your people liberation army navy has recently tested or launched a mysterious missile from its Rehnai class guided missile cruiser ship. What was the name of the missile or what can be the name because it is known as YJ-21. 21 it is expected to be this anti-missile blasting known as yj21 all right because it is a mysterious missile there is no news confirmed but according to the resources according to the experts they are expecting that this is an anti-blasting missile known by the name yj21 and it was launched by whom pla or you can say a country will be asked to you in the exam so remember it was launched by china yj21 belongs to which country it belongs to china first ever Electric cruise ship being built by which country? Biggest ever electric cruise ship being built by which country? China. Artificial moon by China to, uh, to do research on what? To do research on gravity. Moving on. Next, we will be talking about MIMO. What is MIMO? Multiple input, multiple output technology. Recently, IIT Hyderabad has demonstrated this MIMO technology that is multiple input, multiple output technology. First thing that you need to remember here, which institute recently demonstrated MIMO technology? It is your IIT Hyderabad. But what is this MIMO? This massive MIMO involves deployment of MIMO on large scale in the interest of greater network coverage and data carrying capacity. IIT De Hyderabad has developed an experimental research prototype with an aim to discover achievable performance limits. What are the benefits of this MIMO? As you can see here, why this MIMO is considered to be one of the best technology. Here, remember VITO, a vit a MIMO, a vital technology which is being considered for 5G advanced and 6G deployment. It has been developed where it has been or recently it was demonstrated by which organization IIT. Hyderabad. What is MIMO? 
मल्टीपल इनपुट मल्टीपल आउटपुट एक्सट्रीम मैसिव मीमो रेफर्स टू द नेक्स्ट जनरेशन टेक्नोलॉजी दैट यूज इज वेरी लार्ज एंटीना रेज एज यू कैन सी हेयर इन द पिक्चर देर आर लार्ज एंटीनाज सो दिस एक्सट्रीम मैसिव मीमो टेक्नोलॉजी डेमोस्ट्रेटेड बाई आई आई टी हैदराबाद इट कंटेन्स वेरी लार्ज एंटीनाज ऑल्सो रिमेंबर दिस आई आई टी हैज डेवलप्ड एन एक्सपेरिमेंटल रिसर्च प्रोटोटाइप विद एन एम टू डिस्कवर अचीवल परफॉर्मेंस लिमिट्स If we talk about this MIMO, MIMO will increase the coverage and capacity of cellular networks using multiple antennas at the base station. How this will benefit us? It will increase our coverage area. Even if we are in in the remote areas where we do not get networks in our mobile phones, there also will be able to get this mobile signals in our mobile phone using this new technology MIMO. This technique can be used to send multiple data signals simultaneously on the same channel. making optimum optimum use of the spectrum which is becoming an increasingly scarce resource this technology has become the mainstream and an integral part of 5g for cellular operators and users this technology will offer several benefits like high quality voice video delivery in crowded areas like airports so coming back two to three questions what is this mimo mimo will help us in increasing the coverage and capacity of cellular networks even in the remote areas this mimo or the massive extreme massive mimo was recently demonstrated by which organization it was demonstrated by iit hyderabad and what does mimo stands for multiple input multiple output next next we are talking about ittf world ranking recently manika batra has climbed up 10 spaces to achieve the carriest best ranking of 38 in women single title if we look at the ittf what is ittf international table tennis federation ranking was released on 3rd of may 2022 first of all let's look at the ranking top rankers in men singles and women single category these are important you need to remember if we are talking about men single title in table tennis The list is topped by Fang Zhengdong of China and women single title or the top rankers first rank here we are talking about top rank or first rank in men it is Fang Zhengdong of China and women she is Cheng Meng of China they both are from China all right coming back according to ITTF ranking Manika Batra that is an Indian uh, tennis player Manika Batra has achieved a rank of 38 that is the best rank she have achieved in his in her career all right so coming back manika batra what is her rank in the ittf world ranking that was recently released her rank is 38th in men single title it was topped by or in men single ranking it is topped by fan zhengdong of china and if we are talking about women ranking it is topped by cheng meng of china moving on Next we are talking about International Firefighters Day on 4th of May we observe International Firefighters Day this day is annually observed across the globe on 4th of May to create awareness about the significant role of firefighters in ensuring safety of the people and property and to recognize the honor and sacrifice of all the firefighters and also to all those people who lost their life saving other people This day also pays respect to those fighters who lost their lives in the line of duty. Also, the day also marks the feast day of Saint Florian, the patron saint of firefighters, chimney sweeps, and brewers. Coming back, when do we observe International Firefighter Day on fourth of May? Next, we will be talking about the first ever national film festival of the Union Territory of Jammu and Kashmir. So you need to remember two to three organizations. First is Jammu and Kashmir Film Development Council have signed or are in collaboration with National Film Development Corporation along with the Ministry of Information and Broadcasting and Government of India. They are organizing the first ever national film festival of Jammu and Kashmir. Where was this in Srinagar? All right. Question can be asked that National Film Festival of Jammu and Kashmir was observed where it was observed in Srinagar. When was it observed? It was observed from fifty. Uh, it will be observed from fifteenth of June to twentieth of June. All right. So first ever National Film Festival will be held where it will be held in Srinagar. It will be held from fifteenth to twentieth of June, and this is in collaboration with Jammu Kashmir Film Development Council. National Film Development Corporation and your Ministry of Information and Broadcasting along with the Government of India. 
all right these four three organization together is making or organizing this first ever film festival of jammu and kashmir in srinagar let's move to homework now the all the questions that i am giving you as a homework are very easy if you are making notes on daily basis and if you are paying attention to what we are teaching during the session then these questions will be very easy to you and commenting them below will make it your revision period for you all right because if you will comment them you will subconsciously remember that yes this question was asked to me and i commented this question in the comment section so it is a good way of revision also so first question tell me in which city did prime minister narendra modi inaugurated the global patidar business summit that is your gpbs where was this inaugurated first question second as per the 20th world press freedom index 2022 that was released by reporters without borders in india secured dash rank out of 180 countries and dash topped the index what was the rank of the top country in this particular world press freedom index for the year 2022 apart from this you have to tell me what was the rank of india in the year 2021 of world press freedom index that is released by rsf that is reporters without borders third question which nbfc has entered into a joint venture with open financial technologies to launch india's first neo bank for msmes all right first neo bank for msmes has been launched by two organization one is neo banking finance company and second is dash tell me next fourth question recently arvind krishna who has been elected to the board of directors of federal reserve bank of new york question asked here is that this is the information the question has provided but the question now asking is arvind krishna is the chairman and chief executive officer of which company as of now currently he is the chairman and chief executive officer of which company comment below next who recently fifth question who recently became the first indian origin person to be appointed as the first ever cto of cia that is your central intelligence agency of united states of america so who became the first ever cto of cia of usa so friends this was our session and these were some five important homework for you all if you have paid attention and if you were making notes while we i was teaching to you then these questions will be very easy for you all so that's all for the day thank you so friends this was our session i hope you enjoyed our session if you want us to continue with such sessions all you have to do is comment below and do like our video if you want us to continue with such revision videos and if you want us to bring more and more revision videos in future all you have to do is comment below because the value of your comment is very high thank you also if you have any trouble regarding login or payment or any other issues then you can reach to us on our mail that is support at the rate of affairscloud.com or you can call us on the number 9677333862 and we'll resolve your issue as soon as possible also you should go and check our courses that are available at a very reasonable price and that will help you to boost your preparation